I was raised in a sweatshop, abject poverty, illiterate, and abusive family, no hope for the future. Education was my only way out. And yet, when it came to the most important placement exam of my entire life, I was so afraid of failing that I didn't even show up. I'm Dr. Barbara Hong, Dean of University College at Texas A&M International University. I was born and raised in Singapore in government housing, pretty poor. I probably start working when I was six years old. Our house is like a sweatshop. All we do is snip off threads from clothing and uh, for every dozen we get uh, five cents. So we need to make about uh, two dollars to three dollars or else we just drink water. My father is an alcoholic, he gambles. My mother is illiterate, we don't do homework. We don't read, there's no books in the home. My siblings all drop out of school. And the biggest dream that my mother had for any of us is if one of us is a secretary that works in an air-conditioned office, that would be like, wow. You, you can't dream when you are constantly thinking of surviving. Singapore is very harsh when it comes to education. If you cannot read well, the teacher will shame you in front of the class by your seat first to read aloud. And if you stumble more, now you stand on the chair to read. And if you cannot, now you stand on the table to read. I just struggle all the time. And in Singapore, they will position you. So in other words, are you first, are you second, or are you last? And I'm always at the end. And in my culture, saving face, is very critical. It's very hard to be yourself, like saying, hey, I struggle and I fail. Nobody will say that because it's so embarrassing. And then in 10th grade, you take this major exam. This is the Cambridge exam, which determines whether you move on to junior college or not. And if you pass, you will be in a different uniform. If you didn't pass, you will be working. So the 10th grade is like your last chance. It can determine your future. I knew it was an important exam, but I was so discouraged. It's like, I never learned anything. I'm gonna fail anyway, so why even show up for the exam? The day of the exam, I'm like, I'm just not gonna go. I failed terribly. I was constantly reminded, don't study so much because you're not capable of studying. As a child, you believe it. That's it. My life is gonna be just like my parents. I felt that shame for the first time internally. As a mother, I would do everything to protect my children. And yet, uh, I didn't get that. The only way to get out of this vicious cycle is to get an education. And so I decided that I have to do something. I just cannot accept that I allow myself to fail. Like, what do I do? I actually don't know. The only choice is to repeat. I was thinking 365 days is a very long time. It means I have to wear the same uniform. It's the most humiliating thing to do. It could be the longest time in my life or a drop in the ocean. Is it still worth it? Maybe it's worth it. So I am going to suck it up. I said, please, just let me try. That was the first time I spoke up for myself. And so it takes a while to re-register again. But I knew that the first day of school, I will be looked upon like, oh, you're back, you're repeating. I'm not gonna probably have any friends or socialize or anything. Teachers will mock you, literally, thinking that this is going to help motivate you. So the vice principal walks in the class, and says, I'm gonna be teaching your class. I go, oh my goodness. It's the way he teaches us. And he keep on reaffirming, this is your chance, this is your year to show off how good you are. So I kept picturing myself passing. And that self-affirmation was so critical. I learned a lot about persistence and hard work and loving myself. When you believe in yourself, you can draw up strength that you don't even know you had. So when I went to take this exam, I was so excited because this is my chance to showcase all the hard work I've done. And so going up to pick the exam, and I got A's. The first person I went to show was the vice principal. And I go, how is that possible? It's like there was nobody else that passed in the class except you. I allow myself to want to be successful. I allow myself to say that hard work has to pay off. I think I can make it. So even though I started college late, I was one of the youngest to graduate with a PhD. 
People ask me, wow, you know, you finished your undergrad, your doctorate in just eight years. How did you do it? It wasn't the eight years. It was the 22, 23 years that I learned to fail, but keep picking myself up. Then I learned how to stand up and be in that gown and be in my suit and be, be a dean today. I am the kid that would have been written off by the teachers. If they've written me off and they don't care about me, I won't be where I am. I've been a professor for 19 years in the field of special education. So I train teachers, uh, principals and superintendents in working with students who will learn differently. Could I have been that kid that was learning disabled or ADHD, who was distracted? All of this experience helped me to become a more empathetic teacher. I don't know if when you're going through a hard time, you say, oh, I'm so grateful that I'm struggling, but know that down the road, I'm better off that I had those experiences than not. And that face plan is so you're flat on your face. That is the moment that you climb up and you say, but look at me, I got myself up and I can walk another step. You become resilient, you become stronger, you become self-reflective, you become a strength to others. We shame ourselves, even if the world doesn't care. Oh, I already fail. I, I don't allow myself to see anything further. I think we should all embrace failure. Embrace failure like a champ.